He's not saying he's going to stop any of the rest of us from having a view about this. It's early days in his leadership. He's only been elected for two weeks. Um, and so these things have got to settle down and they will do so in time. Um, but he's been quite clear, uh, as have those of us who've joined the shadow cabinet, that these matters are tremendously important. He's not one of those leaders who said he's going to impose his own views from day one on everybody else. So we have to see how this settles down. The shadow cabinet will have to discuss whatever the government come forward with, what that proposition is, as we always do. Let's, let's take, though, for example, Trident. Yeah. You promised yesterday a, a public-facing discussion and debate. Uh, at some point, a decision is going to have to be taken. Either the party is going to shift back to what is seen as a hard left 1980s position, or Jeremy Corbyn's going to be leading a party whose policy he's morally opposed to. Well, in respect of that issue, um, when Jeremy asked me to be the Shadow Defence Secretary, I reminded him of what my position is on Trident, which is that I voted for it in the vote in 2007, and I have always supported um, us renewing our independent nuclear deterrent. Now, I know that he and I disagree about this. He asked me to facilitate a debate. And I think, you know, politics is changing in this country. Are you prepared to change your mind if the party comes to a different view? Well, um, I think it will be very difficult for me to change my mind in respect of this. I've looked at this very carefully. I've looked at it very seriously. As those of us who were in Parliament at the time that this decision was taken in 2007, all did. Um, that isn't to say that we shouldn't have a big public facing discussion about the rights and wrongs and the ins and outs and the pros and cons of this policy. Now I don't think that most Labour Party members would realise that in our national policy forum, which is our policy making processes, during the last parliament we had 20 hours of debate about this. I think if I were to say that to most party members they'd say, did we? I think politics is changing such that we need a much broader, public-facing, transparent and open debate about these things. And that's what Jeremy has asked me to facilitate. Because I think, you know, when you've got long lead-in time, something like Trident, the decision was originally made in 2007, you won't get the first vote in service until 2028. That is a long lead-in time that people need to be convinced. You can't just make a decision once in 2007 and then so that's it for the next 20 years. Is everything up for debate? Is Britain's membership of NATO up for debate? No, that's not up for debate. And Jeremy even, himself... Even, even though Jeremy Corbyn has questioned the, 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 the rationale of, of NATO still existing? I think Jeremy um, was concerned about the eastward march of NATO and what that would do. Um, he has made clear during the leadership election and since that NATO, mem our membership of NATO is not up for discussion. And our participation in NATO operations in exercises in Eastern Europe uh, to, in some see it simply as a show of force towards Russia. Is Labour well, supportive well, of that? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, uh, we're in NATO, we have to play our part in NATO, we have to do our bit, make our contribution, and we will do that. We have a defence review coming up. We have a government that has <coughs> now protected defence spending and actually promised to, to in increase it. What are you looking for from this defence review, given that we, we know we're not going to see swinging cuts? Well, the, the first thing we're looking for is uh, a, a, a more sensible approach to what's needed. I think the last... SDSR was very much driven by cuts. What can we cut? Um, how much money can we remove? That was the, the sense of the times. And I don't think it proceeded. It was too fast. I don't think it proceeded from the point of view of what capability do we need? What threats are we going to face? And therefore, what should we prioritize? So I think we need a much more policy and defense based view. Um, for example, the last SDSR did not um, envisage ISIL Daesh as a threat, did not envisage what's happened in the Ukraine as being a potential threat. So I think we've got to be much more canny about identifying threats and making sure that our capability is able to deal with what we think is going to be out there over the next period of time.